there jam tarts welcome to this video where i'm going to get excited about some of my favorite oracle decks that i love to use for self-development healing personal growth deep dive shadow work stuff all of it it's going to kind of run across the spectrum there's going to be some sort of lighter gentler sort of decks and then others that are like a complete psycho spiritual smack in the face and i'm going to talk a little bit about why each of them have been useful for me on my personal journey why i would recommend them for people who use oracle for personal development and uh, inner work and shadow work and all that good jazz and hopefully there'll be something in here that is of interest to you. There are so many Oracle decks that I don't even know about. I'm not the most savvy. I'm not the most kind of like, I don't have my fingers in all of the card slinging pies. So these are just the ones that I've collected over the course of time that I would say if I was going to put a stack aside for personal growth and deep work and healing work and maybe, you know, self-honesty, radical acceptance, that kind of thing. These would be the ones out of my collection that I would choose. I'm going to be doing some cutaways, guys, so that you can see the beauty of some of these cards and get more of a sense of why I find them to be useful when I'm doing this kind of work for myself. Of course, as a full-time card slinger as well, I use Oracle decks for my clientele, and these would definitely be amongst the decks that I would find to be useful for clients too. I've definitely used all of these for my clients. The first deck that I want to rave about that is really good for self-development and personal growth and that kind of thing is the Amenti Oracle. Now, this is actually the newest Oracle deck in my collection, but I found it to be really helpful very, very quickly. I just clicked with it straight away, and I really enjoy the fact that all of the cards have affirmations on them so every single card starts with the word i and it's basically just an affirmation on each of the cards which i find to be something that is really empowering and kind of locks me into my power and reminds me of what it is that i might not be seeing about what i'm capable of you know so it's really about digging down into your strengths your resources your perspectives and understanding that you are capable of these amazing mindset shifts and you are capable of going out in the world and doing these amazing things and as you can see from the images um, in the cutaways the the palette here is really beautiful the use of black and white with these flashes of color is really gorgeous you've got some cards that are incredibly bold and are sort of the more standout cards you've got others that do more rely upon the monochromatic vibe and just the little hints of sort of more pastel color so I like that as well. It really gives your eyes lots of things to be doing and looking at when you are observing a full spread. I find that this is a really good deck for altar work. It's a really good deck for a daily draw. And then you can be using the affirmation as you go through the day, whatever affirmation you received. Of course, it's also really good for journal prompts. I think all of these affirmations could also be used as journal prompts. So I would definitely recommend a Menti Oracle, particularly if you are somebody who's interested in affirmations, words of power, that kind of thing. A Menti Oracle provides so much of that for you. I also think with a Menti Oracle, it can be really useful not just to turn over and lay out a spread or do a daily draw, but also just to consciously go through the deck right ways up and select the um, affirmation that works for you. So I live in truth might be the affirmation that you uh, want to use. I spread joy. You know, you could really just go through and decide what your affirmation is going to be for the day. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a blind draw. I think a Menti Oracle works particularly well if you want to do a conscious draw and you're looking for a card to inspire you for the day uh, a card of your choosing as it were so definitely would recommend a menti oracle for self-development work and kind of you know connecting with yourself connecting with your power Okay, the next recommendation is a lot harder in nature. It is definitely a little bit more of a throwdown of a deck. It is the Dark Mirror Oracle. And this one, wow, very, very intense. This deck was actually not on my radar. I had absolutely no idea that it existed. It was given to me a long time ago as a present um, from Oya's Girl, another content creator who works closely with the cards on YouTube. I will leave her channel down below. If you don't know about it, you really need to go and subscribe. And I was really surprised surprised by this because I just never heard of it and I was like oh that's really exciting and, and different and just even the the front of the box I was like okay let me get into this and then um, as you can see from the cutaways that I'm kind of showing to you now just very intense a lot of intensity you know you've got titles like fated to suffer calling the storm 
um, alone in the world, sacrifice, envious gluttony, the child I was meant to be, fragmentation, you know, so you've just got these very shadow oriented words that are almost really supposed to conjure up unpleasant feelings inside of you. They're supposed to find their way to the roots of your shadows so that even if you weren't really sure where to begin or what you wanted to examine in shadow, I mean, the cards will soon drag you down right to that shadow realm and you will um, be forced to think about things that, uh, you know, you really do need to examine, but maybe you weren't even conscious of the fact that you needed to examine them. So it definitely does what it says on the tin, dark mirror. It does reflect back to you um, the darker aspects of your condition. It says on the back of the box, a spiritual mirror for those who are not yet shining in the light, but are still surrounded by darkness. So really it's coming from a place where, it, you know, to read it, you've already got to feel like you are in darkness, like you really are in a shadowy place in your life. There really is a lot of difficulty going on and you're not in the light. And so it's about wrestling through the darkness and it's about being in it in order to integrate it, in order to understand it um, and, and create that balance. So I definitely think the guidebook is really helpful in untangling some of these really rather far out names. So I definitely would say that the guidebook is great. This is one for shadow deep divers. This is one I think for people who might be um, experienced with shadow work or might feel like they do know what they're doing with shadow work and they're at a point in their lives where they do need something that is not gonna pull punches and is going to force them to do some serious work on themselves. Oracle of Echoes, I really, really love this Oracle deck. This is my favorite Oracle deck that I own. Um, and I've said that time and time again, I really love this one. It's so bloody beautiful and it always gives really interesting intriguing, really truthful, really right on readings. Uh, the painting by Anatorian is just gorgeous. I love the palette. It's very moody. It's got these beautiful uh, light hues, but also this very sort of shadowy, um, you know, sort of evocative stuff as well. I think that it's got a really perfect balance between forcing you to confront the darkness and moving you towards that sense that you are in balance and you are bringing your shadow to the light, if you will. Um, I know some people don't like the paradigm of light and darkness, but honestly, what I'm using it for is just to mean, you know, whatever is uh, whatever has been abandoned and placed into darkness by the ego and then whatever has been integrated and brought into consciousness and been accepted by the ego. Um, and I think Oracle of Echoes does a really good job of kind of combining different aspects together so that you get a nice balanced reading. So some of the cards are chaos um, and um, fear and depression, but then you've also got cards like creativity, um, goddess speaks and uh, trust and breakthrough and spirit heals so you've got this combination which I think is really nice and it's always a really interesting surprise whenever I work with Oracle of Echoes for myself or a client with my own self-development work Oracle of Echoes has been absolutely so useful um, I can't get enough of it so I definitely wanted to put this in there as a recommendation I think it's really good for healing when you're heartbroken I think it's really good for when your emotional well-being is not where it needs to be and you might need to be honest about how you're sabotaging yourself but it's also really good for strategizing for what you want and how to make that happen but there's also this sense of accountability that this particular deck gives you where it, it calls you on your shit sometimes I really enjoy using the fine lines meditation cards for intentional living. These are really interesting because they have a very different format to what you are used to with Oracle cards. So basically um, they give you two options for each card and the options are kind of like contrast, you know, they offer contrast. Uh, they make you think about where you are on the spectrum between one thing and another thing. And sometimes those things are not opposing opposites, but they're opposite enough to give you a sense that they are making you think about things a bit differently. So for example, you've got here um, vulnerability versus victimhood. Retreat versus escape, which I think is a really good one. Uh, Self-empowerment versus self-denial and teaching versus telling. I'm going to go to the cutaways now so you can see a little bit more of the palette and enjoy just looking at the cards um, as they're kind of like laid out for you to sort of observe. But essentially, it's just that contrast and it's asking you where you place yourself um, in the spectrum of meaning between the two words that are offered or the two phrases that are offered. It also sort of asks you to get your head around where you are in relation to what 
what these words mean to you. And that can be really interesting. It's great to explore what different words actually mean to you and how they feel to you and how they have an effect on your psyche and why that might be. And that definitely causes you to go down interesting avenues of exploration. So I definitely can recommend the fine lines meditation cards for intentional living, especially if you're looking for something a little bit different. Maybe you're bored of pictorial decks. Maybe you do enjoy decks that just use words. This is a really interesting concept and it's very well executed. If you're in the market for something a little bit softer, a little bit gentler in the in the Oracle area of things, The Psychic Tarot for the Heart by John Holland. I really, really love this deck. I, um, I don't necessarily think it's the most amazing art I've ever seen. It's not like it's the art that really like grabs me the most and influences me the most, but it's more the titles of the cards and the fact that it always seems to be the correct combination of cards that come through. Um, again, you've got a really nice combination between those happy happier, more joyful, uh, more uplifting themes and the darker, more sort of shadow oriented themes as well. So you've got that balance there. But also I've got to say the readings are just always bang on. I always feel like I get exactly what I need from this deck and I feel like I can't fault it for that. It's really great for my clients when I'm doing, when I'm helping them to do, you know, deep healing or um, seeing situations for what they are, self-love and, and where that self-love is lacking and why. So it's really good for my clientele as well. But I really can't fault it for my my own personal journey either it always seems to give me what I need and so um, I definitely felt it couldn't go without a mention for that reason and I'd love to hear in the comments from anybody who uses this um, psychic tarot for the heart do you find as well that it gives just really bang on readings um, sorry if you can hear my stomach rumbling darlings I am definitely finding as I'm as I began to film that I'm feeling a bit hungry I also want to recommend another oracle deck that gives you rather more of a soft landing I think maybe this gives you a softer landing potentially than psychic tarot for the heart um, but again it does uh, it doesn't let you get away with things it kind of suggests actions for you to take it asks you where you might not be doing what you could be doing to help yourself and serve yourself and that is Ethany Dawn's The Awakened Soul Oracle deck I really enjoy this one very much I've been working with it for myself and clientele and I can tell you that it definitely gives me a lot to think about in terms of self-care where I might be missing things in the realm of self-care, uh, whereabouts I might need to pay more attention. Definitely, I think this gives one of the softest landings of any of the decks that I have recommended here so far. Um, but for me, just because something gives you a soft landing and an opportunity to think about things without getting too shadowy doesn't mean that it is not a valuable deck. I think certainly there are people that are aware that what they're looking for in a particular moment is not necessarily a deck like Dark Mirror or, um, you know, Oracle of Echoes. It is a deck more like the awakened soul which is gentle but which is also um, full of suggestions and full of ideas and full of things that you might be missing and full of things that you might need to look more closely at there are um you know quite a lot of uh, interesting card names in here you've got mirror you've got rebirth you've got desire leadership adventure challenge surrender cleanse so there are these really interesting words a lot of them are verbs as well which gives you that sense that you might want to take action on these things that the cards are bringing up or think about where action might be lacking for you in your situation so i definitely think it's motivational in that sense and i really just enjoy the feeling of working with it it does make me feel warm it does make me feel safe and i don't always think that's a bad thing I think sometimes oracle decks that give that softer landing get a bad rep and I don't always understand why because sometimes we need that you know you select the medicine that you need in that moment you go for the prescription that you know is going to help you in that instance and sometimes for me it's not about breaking out something like dark mirror you know that's not always going to be helpful it's not always where I am it's not always what I need so the awakened soul as I said can be very motivational very action oriented and it can kind of just gently guide you towards things that you might be missing about your situation or what you could do to improve your situation the final deck that I want to mention is the sacred creators oracle I do not have the box for this because it came in quite a large bulky box 
and I don't know where the bloody box is or where the book is. Now the book I just enjoy reading on its own so probably it's ended up in a pile of books somewhere which is really annoying but the box I'm a little worried because I don't know where the box is and usually it's with all of my other bulky tarot and oracle boxes so not sure what I did with it but um, nevertheless um, Sacred Creators Oracle, amazing palette, uh, not pictorial, it's got some symbols on each of the cards um, but no illustrations per se, just these wonderful symbols and words and the way that it looks is so beautiful, this is a really high quality deck, uh, the, the palette just is really inviting and soothing this is really for people who are looking into blocks that they might have with their creativity, blocks that they might have with their ability to take action on things that they want to achieve. So it's definitely about connecting with your ambition, connecting with your momentum, thinking about how to manifest what you desire. And there's definitely enough material in here for you to think about what might be going wrong with that and where the blocks are with that, as well as lots of very beautiful high vibe messages, very high vibe words and phrases that can just get you moving in a really nice, pleasant direction. Um, some of the card, um, the, the phrases on the cards are things like, what do you really want? Um, uh, integrate your knowing. One of them says, shift the way to new potential. One of them said, what, one of them says, what is your honest truth? Uh, what does your soul say? So, you know, I really love these questions and these phrases. Um, one of them says magic happens when you most expect it, which I absolutely love. I love it when that card comes up for me. So, yeah, I think, you know, it's positive. It's high vibe, but it also asks you honest questions that will really direct you to where you might be holding yourself back and what is going on within you that you might not be being truthful about on your journey. I really hope that you have enjoyed these recommendations of some of my favourite oracle decks for self-development and personal growth. Again, I'd love to hear yours down in the comments and it's been a pleasure to take you through some of the favourites in my collection. Much love until the next time we meet, baby cakes. Blessed be.